Hi, and welcome to the Free From Knits YouTube channel. I'm Hexi and Evers, a knitting crochet who's free from ways of crafting and led to the world of design. All the places you can find me will be linked to down below, as well as anything else I talk about in this video, I'll have it listed in the down bar below. Thank you so much for stopping by and crafting with me for a while. Okay, so I've been away for a while. I was trying to get into the groove of keeping this up weekly, but it just wasn't happening. Hopefully I can stick with it this time, but we'll see how that goes. Life's just been life, and I'm sure many of you can relate. Um, things have been crazy, so... But there's been crafting, so that's always good. So, I'm not really sure where to start. I don't remember what I was working on last time. Probably not a lot. My crafting's kind of been going in waves, but I've recently been struck by some inspiration, so we'll just follow that. The first big piece of news, actually, I think I'll talk about is... are these two cowls. The same cowl, but there's a story behind them. So, I started a newsletter. You can now sign up for a newsletter where you can get information about upcoming pattern releases, special promos, all that stuff, and that will be linked down below. But when you sign up for that pattern, you can get a free pattern of a kente cowl. So this is my kente cowl pattern. It is this simple colorwork cowl, and it has a full video tutorial that is free here on YouTube. So you can sign up for the newsletter, get your free PDF, and watch that video, and you can make this cowl. It's super simple colorwork, and the lighting is, as always, basement lighting, so hopefully, yeah, you can see that. This is the Kete cowl, and Kete is, means, it's, it's like chain links. That's the inspiration behind it. And I just love this pattern. It's really simple, very good introduction to color work. And it just, it's so pretty, and it's once you get into the pattern repeat, it's very intuitive, so. Uh, this Kete cowl was made out of must be merino. I think this was just the silver colorway, but it's more of a blue. I think it's silver though. I think it's called silver on the ball band. And then this is like the mustard, is the contrast. And then, so this was my sample, and then this is the one I made during the tutorial. And this was actually made out of the yellow is the same as the first one, the must be merino in the mustard, but the gray is actually Nitpix's DK. What's it called? Nitpix Swift? <laughs> what's it called? Nitpix Swish. That's what it's called. Nitpix Swish DK um, in the Dove Heather colorway. I really love their DK. It's so nice. It's got this woolly feel, but it's really soft. I don't know how that's possible, but. And then here are my floats, because I like seeing people's floats. They came out better than they felt like they were coming out. You know when you're knitting and you can just like feel like this isn't right? But it, it actually... maybe that's the blocking. I shouldn't take credit. It's the blocking. You can see... there we go. So these are really nice cowls, and I'm really happy with them. So you can sign up for the newsletter, get your free pattern, and follow the tutorial. So that'll all be listed below if you're interested. Okay, so that's that. That was something new, right? Yeah, I'm pretty positive. <laughs> it's been a while. So now, in the realm of finished objects, uh, I will have a little sock parade. So some of these you've definitely seen. And I think one of them was a whip. But here's the sock parade, three pairs of socks. So I'm pretty sure I never showed you this pair, though it was done. I'm pretty sure this is the pair that I kept forgetting to grab in the last few episodes. So I'll put one on the blocker. This is a pattern I'll have coming out soon. This is going to be my Garter Rib Bliss sock. So this pattern is... I have a free hat pattern on Ravelry called the Garter Rib Bliss Hat. And I love that pattern. I love that pattern texture. So I put that texture on a sock and I'm actually thinking I might do another sample where I do it all the way around because I think it would look so cool. I might do that. So here's the sock and here's the texture. 
I just, I love it so much. It's so easy to knit. It's so mindless and yet you get a texture out of it. Do you ever feel like that? Like you want to knit a vanilla sock, but you don't want the outcome to be a vanilla sock. That's what this is. <laughs> and so it actually has my new toe, my hat trick toe, which is a rounded toe that I love. And I think this was the first draft of my hat trick toe. Yes. Yes, this was my first draft of the hat trick toe, so there's a little mistake in this sock. But this one is the proper hat trick toe. And it also has my shortcut heel and garter stitch. And I actually did something new for the ribbing on this. It's like this braided rib. It's very simple, it's just a little manipulation of two by two rib. Because when it comes to ribbing, I tend to cop out because I'm lazy. <laughs> So the yarns for this, um, the self-striping is Knit Picks Felici. I want to say Carrot Cake. That might not be the colorway name. I don't recall, but that's what I want to say. So I'm actually, no, I'm pretty sure it's Carrot Cake. If it is not, I will list it below. <laughs> so that's that color. It's self-striping. It's really pretty. And then this, the contrast is a Yarn Bee Mini, which is only 80-20 acrylic nylon and so I love using that for um heels toes and cuffs it's a 25 gram mini and I don't recall how much I had left but it was enough to do heels toes and cuffs I really like the yarn bee minis because they're I can get them very easily and they come in a variety of colors so it's great to match up with self-stripping yarn so that's that sock oh and I knit my socks all my socks are knit on a Chowgu US 2.75 my five millimeter needle us2 2.75 millimeter needle that is what i knit my socks on most people knit their socks on like a one or even a zero and i try using a one or a one and a half i think it's one and a half anything smaller than a 2.75 it's too tight and I, I can't stand knitting it so i don't know if my sock gauge is looser than others probably but i like i like it so we're gonna stick with that Okay, now, these next socks I know I definitely showed you, but I don't recall if I showed you when they were actually released. But if not, here they are. This is my Bramble sock. This is a pattern that I published over two years ago and updated recently. So it's got more sizes, charts, written instructions, everything. And it's also got my hat trick toe and my shortcut heel in both garter and stockinette. I'm endeavoring to put in my sock patterns, all my sock patterns, my shortcut heel, which is a heel method that requires no short rows. And I love it. So here's the Bramble sock. And this was a collaboration with Knit Picks. Um, they sent me the yarn for this. This is Knit Picks Stroll Tonal in the... I keep seeing this color everywhere. Sunflower? Dandelion, no idea. No idea. I will put it below. That's the theme. I have not I know nothing. But it's this super pretty and it won't focus. Come on, you can do this. There you go. It's got garter stitch, it's got this slip stitch and this super fun texture pattern we are actually knitting into the fabric. It sounds weird, but it's so much fun to do and really easy. So uh, that's that, and there are two. I have two here, but just easier to show one. So poppy fill tunnel. Poppy fill tunnel. I'll take poppy fill tunnel for 200. Ugh. I don't recall anything anymore. So uh, that are the, those are those socks, and those are you can be found in my Ravelry store. The Bramble socks. And the last sock in our little sock parade was definitely a whip last time. And this is a pattern that's going to be a part of a collection coming later this year. But here is the sock itself. This sock was giving me trouble because the pattern on it, um, it doesn't fit with like standard stitch counts of socks. So I had to fill with that, but I figured it out. And it is so nice. It's a little bit bigger than my other socks because I actually accidentally knit myself own size, but it's okay. I like, I'm good with loose socks, I think. So here is the sock pattern. It's this knit pearl texture and it's got 
one by one twisted rib and it has my shortcut heel and garter I chose to do because I love it and this was also a collaboration with Nitpix. This is Nitpix Stroll, ton Nitpix Stroll Tonal. Yeah, I won't even try to guess the name. It'll be below. Blue Violet. See, once you give up, you realize the answer. So that is this sock pattern, and this you'll see this later in the year when the rest of the collection is ready. So I gotta stop seeing so. That's my transition word, so and okay, or sometimes both of them together. The one or two really last finished objects you've definitely seen before. I actually have a video coming out all about them, but I have updated and am going to be republishing my June bug cap. So my June bug cap is a crochet pattern with a visor. It's just a really nice, it's a nice cap. There, this is why you keep your pattern names simple. It's a super nice cap and it's perfect. I knit, I crocheted the larger size because I love gathering up my hair and tucking it under, especially if you like I'm working outside. It's just really good. So, this one was knit out of I Love This Yarn. Can't recall the colorway, but it's super pretty. It's probably like blue, blue or spiral blue or something like that. It's probably very simple. And then the other sample was another Knit Picks yarn, and I actually have a full skein of the yarn right here, Knit Picks Dishy. This is the Azure colorway, this was just the silver. So this will be updated and you will actually be able to either purchase the PDF pattern with the full, you'll be able to download the PDF, the full um, sizes, I'll offer three sizes in the PDF, or you can get one size free on my blog. So, like I said, I'll have a video all about that, and with links to that and stuff. I'll, I'll link that when that's out. Yeah, words. So, there's that. Okay. I was afraid that was too much, but we actually made it through it. It's all good. And my sock blockers are nitpick sock blockers in the medium size. So, I really like the nitpick sock blockers because they're nice hard plastic. And there's no like jagged edges. I had a pair of sock blockers um, before that was like that. That had the like the plastic edges were all jagged and it was like scraping my socks as I put it on. So I like the nitpicks ones. Okay. Now before we get into whips, I do have one more thing to talk about. Kind of we'll probably do a separate video for it, but I will talk about it. I just have to reach down and grab it. So I started um, something new, it is called the Stitch of the Month Club, it is a Patreon club. So how the Stitch of the Month Club, the reason behind it is so that um, you can learn more stitches. I know for me that I, I sometimes get in a rut with my knitting and crocheting, I want to do something new but the process of learning something new, it can just be too much. Like you look through your stitch dictionaries and you see the written instructions and you, you have to like focus on them, obviously. <laughs> and sometimes the stitch dictionaries, like they don't have the way I prefer it, you know, like they'll usually offer either written instructions or charts, not both. Or there'll be a technique in there that I can't find anywhere else that I'm not sure how to decipher. So I started the Stitch of the Month Club. An institution month club, it's an indie club at the moment. You will be, every month, we will be learning a new stitch pattern. So, and in the stitch pattern, you can sign up and you will get a stitch pattern all typed up in a PDF with both charts and written instructions for how to work it flat and in the round and a full video tutorial walking you through the entire repeat. So, that is the, pro the premise of the Stitch of the Month Club. And June Stitch of the Month is up, and this is the Stitch of the Month for June. It is called the Falling Leaves Stitch Pattern, and it is this really nice lacy pattern. All you need are yarn overs and this special two-stitch decrease that makes these decorative parts. 
and so that's the stitch of the month and there was another option in the club called pattern of the month and you also you not only get the stitch of the month but you also get a exclusive pattern featuring that month's stitch pattern and this month it is a hat and it is called the alexandrite hat and i'm in love with this hat i love this hat so much so this is it worked up in lion band's true brew which is a hundred percent rayon from bamboo yarn held double so it's made this really nice after it's been blocked it's just like this really lacy drapey hat and it's so pretty i love it so much and then here's the pattern worked in a worsted weight acrylic yarn and it's still super nice so like you could have this hat you could knit it up in like a cotton or like the 100 percent rayon and have it be this drapey thing, or you could knit it up in a heavier yarn and it would still be really warm and pretty. So this is the Alexandrite hat, and it is for the month of June, it will be exclusive to the Patreon club. And so I will have, I'll, I'll definitely do a video with more coherent details and I'll link it below. And I will also link the club below. If you wanna join, you can come on over. There's also a Ravelry group um, where you can come in and ask any questions, chat, whatever. It's really just a club to help learn new stitch patterns because I love learning new stitch patterns, as you can tell from my obsession with making pattern socks. <laughs> so anything I can do to help share that joy. I do love this hat. Here, I can try it to look ridiculous, but it's super pretty and I made mine a little bit slouchy. I'm gonna just mess up my hair, but that's fine. Ow. Okay, I did it again. Now, I only have two whips. I have more whips, but I only brought two to show, which is probably for the best. So, both of them are knitting whips. I do have a crochet whip that I'm wanting to cast on, and I will actually talk about that a little bit later. But this, I actually have a finished object in here, but I'm kind of not counting a finished object until... The entire project is done because this next whip is a collection of patterns. So it's in this Winnie the Pooh bag that I sewed and that the drawstring's broken, but that's okay. And so the pattern here, this is what I finished. I finished a hat. It's just a plain vanilla hat. And I actually forced myself to do ribbing extra long because I wanted to have the aesthetic of the extra long ribbing. It didn't take long. These are worsted weight projects of what I'm knitting. I'm trying to fix it. It has not been blocked yet, so. That's the hat. And then I actually just started the glove this morning and I'm already done halfway, more than halfway. So this was under an hour. So worsted weight projects, I love them. I love how fast they are. So this is the glove. <clears throat> And this is going to be a collection of patterns that will be coming later, so I don't want to give away too much, but it's going to be, the title of the collection is going to be called The Essential Collection, and it's going to, it's just these plain knits, but there's going to be a fun twist to them that I will talk more about later when it's closer to being ready. But here's the glove, and I just finished the thumb. Now it looks tight here, but I th I'm... I'm blaming that on my hands because I have kind of relatively big hands, I guess. Like, they're kind of, I don't know. They're my hands, they're fine. But I do find that I'm not a fan of how gussets fit me. But I did want to do a gusset for this collection. But that's why it looks so stretched here. But it's okay. It is nice. It's easier to do a gusset than an active thought thumb, in my opinion. That's just my hands. It's fine. I'm rambling. So here's the glove, and I think I'm gonna definitely get this finished today. And started start the second one. Um, moisture weight gloves. I in the past knit moisture weight gloves in less than a day, like an evening, a whole pair. They're so much fun. And I'm actually using these needles. These are US eight needles. I believe they're called the brand is Knitters Pride. And I do love their wooden needles. They're super pretty, and they're surprisingly not sticky. 
like like bamboo. I find bamboo is very sticky, but these are like, I guess the term is laminated wood. I don't recall, but that's that project. And the yarn I am using is I Love This Yarn in the cream colorway, and this is what I have left of a skein. It wasn't a full skein to start with, so I do need more of that yarn to finish this project. Not the gloves, but the next part of the project. Okay. I did it again. Okay. Mm. I gotta stop saying okay. Okay. The last whip I will share with you is a sock whip that has been on the needles for a very long time. I have just not been not been in the mood to knit this sock. I've knit other pairs of socks. I forgot. I didn't bring a pair of socks that I probably should have. I'll show it next time. But I have not been knitting this sock. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. I stopped in the middle of the heel and it was dead to me. <laughs> but here's the sock. It's my shortcut heel sock recipe, but I just did it as a shorty. Just did fewer rounds on the leg. And here's my shortcut heel. I finished it and the gusset decreases, so... I'm just on the foot. It's plain knitting. It's perfect vanilla knitting, but as you can see from the other project, vanilla knitting is pretty much all I have at the moment. But the yarn I'm using is Nipix Felici, and I believe this is the Gothic Kitty colorway. No, Countess colorway. Countess. This is the Countess. And then this is the Yarn Bee Mini I'm using. It doesn't have a name, but it's just this really pretty lilac, and it goes super well with this. You can see from the sock. It just goes perfectly. And I actually have... I used to, or really still do, like start my self-striping socks with a contrast. And the reason for that is because I don't mind if my socks don't match. I mind if the stripes themselves are offset. Like if, like you can see here, this is only half a white stripe. And I made sure to start this sock on half a white stripe. Because if this sock started on half a white stripe and this sock just started like on the pink, like a full pink, that would drive me crazy. Well, not drive me crazy, but I wouldn't like it. So I usually start with a contrast on the cuff because that makes it easier to start knitting and make the stripes match as much as possible. But I recently came up with a perfect way to cast on with self striping yarn and I did a full tutorial for it and it'll be listed below. I cast it on, and so you cast on, so you con your cast on is in a contrast, but then you get a full stripe of the next color. And I love it. I love how it looks. It looks so clean and planned and not at all like here's half a stripe and then a full stripe. So happy about it. So there's that. Now just, here we go. You can see the sock better like this. I was having a hard time with this bleachy colorway differentiating between like the stripes like there's this dark purple and then this darker purple and before you knit it up it's really hard to tell the difference especially if you're trying to place your heel and here are my chowgu needles so this is just in this little bag here it's just a store-bought bag it's perfect for carrying around and getting in vanilla knitting but like I said, this sock has been in the needles longer than it should have been. But what can you do? So that's all my whips. Um, I do, there is, I've been wanting to crochet. I did crochet a small project that I did not bring. Um, and it was kind of good to stop thinking about wanting to crochet and actually crocheting. But there is a project I do want to crochet. And I believe it's called the Forest Tea. And I'll see if I can put a picture here. I don't know how to edit that in but maybe I can we'll see um if not I'll put a picture at the end or something or stop the video put it right here we'll see or you'll see um so there's it's this very simple crochet tee um I believe it's done top down or bottom up I think it's done in pieces I've got no clue but I have the pattern out and I'm going to be alternating two skeins of yarn um, so I can get, so I don't have to stripe it. Told me marling two together? I don't know. 
I'll be like doing two stripes in one color, two rows in one color, two rows in the other. It'll work out. I'm really excited about that and want to start crocheting that. But I do want to finish the socks that won't end. Well, that would if I would work on them. And that other project. Um, I do have other whips too. I have my cozy memory blanket that I was working on for a long time when I wasn't feeling inspired to cast on anything. And I put a lot of project progress into that, so I'll probably show that next time. And I did start another blanket with that I'm holding DK double, and it is so pretty. And it's like the best colors ever. So I'll definitely, I'll, I'll probably only show that when I finish it, because it's kind of a lot of yarns to bring together. If they're like full skeins, they're not scraps. And speaking of scraps, I have a lot of worst weight scraps that I am longing to use up. I have Envision. I really want to try marling um, the scraps together, like by holding a contrast like throughout, like I envision a cowl, and like I have this yarn, this gray fingering yarn that I'm not really using for anything, that I could hold that with the worsted and like make this long tube and just knit around and watch the colors play. And I'm really excited about that. Like that's what I want to do. I'll probably do that eventually. <laughs> um, podcasts I've been watching. I have been, like I said, I wasn't feeling inspired to knit, so um, I wasn't watching podcasts for a while, and then I did feel inspired to knit, but does anyone else, when you watch a podcast, like, you have to be, like, I can't just watch any podcast, sometimes I can't, sometimes if I'm in a podcasting mood, I want, I will watch any and all podcasts that show up, other times it's like, I, I just, I just don't watch it it's like it's really weird like i'm not enjoying it in that moment so i put it off until i'm like ready to watch that podcast it's really weird because like i want to watch the podcast but i don't want to watch it right then so it's really weird it's like it's like you know you get into a creative block i'm in a podcast block so to cure it i decided to pick one podcast that i did want to watch and watch it from the beginning and so the podcast i'm watching from the beginning is Julie of Twin Stitches Designs. I love her podcast. I love her designs and just how just her style of podcasting. So I'm enjoying her style of podcasting by rewatching all her episodes until I've caught up at the beginning. And then we'll see if I get back into the you know more recent episodes of podcasts I follow. Does anyone else do that? I feel like I'm the only one. Like sometimes you're just like, you get used to somebody else's podcast and their style, and so you can't shift to watch somebody else's. Like, it's not that you don't like their podcast, it's just you can't fully enjoy it in that moment because you're, like, stuck. It's so weird. But that's happened to me before, so I do recommend this cure. Just pick one and watch from the beginning. <laughs> I'm really enjoying that. So I've been watching that while I've been working on that uh, hat and glove project. I should be working on my socks while watching it. <laughs> oh well. So I think that's everything. Um, I will be trying my hardest. My goal That's another thing. Julie has been such a design, especially in her earlier podcasts. She ta always sets these goals even though she says she won't, but it, I find that really inspiring. You know, I'm just setting a goal. So let's try this. Let's set a goal. I want to have those gloves done, which I'm pretty sure I can easily do. Those socks done. I'll see if I can do that. And I also have a goal. I want to podcast four times this month. I want to podcast once a week. So those are my goals. That should be fine, right? Yeah. So hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me and for sitting and crafting for a while and listening to me ramble. Happy knitting!